The older I get, the more I'm fascinated by how fortunate we are to have this planet to live on. Earth is in just about the ideal spot in its orbit around our star, in the so-called Goldilocks zone. You know, not too hot, not too cold. Further, we have an atmosphere and a magnetosphere that helps shield us from solar radiation and from cosmic rays. It also helps burn up smaller space debris that collides with the planet. Pretty sweet. And yet, because we only experience an existence on this planet, we tend to take it for granted. Or we'll marvel at geographic features like the Grand Canyon or a plunging waterfall, but the Earth itself is just here. It's the ground we walk on, the surroundings we're familiar with. True, we are beginning to find other planets surrounding other stars, and some appear to be in their own Goldilocks zone, but that's about all we know right now. And of course, all of these are inconceivably distant from us, and effectively off limits, until and unless we discover some previously unknown method of interstellar space travel. A very graphic, and to me, very profound, representation of how small and fragile our planetary home is, was a photo taken over 30 years ago by Voyager 1 as it approached the outer edges of our solar system. The first time I saw it, it really had an effect on me. Apparently, astronomer and author Dr. Carl Sagan had specifically asked for this unusual photo to be taken, not because it would be scientifically useful at such a distance, but for the impact of seeing our planet hanging alone in the vastness of space. Pale Blue Dot is a photo of Earth that was taken by the Voyager 1 space probe in 1990, from a distance of about 6 billion kilometers, almost 4 billion miles. This is what Dr. Sagan later wrote about the photo. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us on it. Everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. This earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. And while we may travel and even perhaps colonize other worlds in the future, probably the far future if we're honest, right now Earth is all we have. This is it. It's a precious thing that we sometimes treat quite shabbily, instead of treasuring it and rejoicing in it. Just something to consider.